Hey guys, it's Anjali from Doodle Quilting Studio. And today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you guys about quilting collage quilts. So I quilt a lot of these types of quilts. And what I mean by collage quilts um, are these quilts. You can kind of see this one in front of me. Um, this particular quilt is a pattern that was designed by my mom. Um, it's called Summer Harvest. Um, and you can kind of see there's a little bit of a close up. So it's basically a layered fusible applique type project. So you have a base layer and then you use fusible to um, put all the pieces on. So there's a lot of layers. So fabric, fusible, um, I mean, in some places there's probably, there could be up to like five or six layers of fabric and fusible. So there's a lot to go through on these types of quilts. Um, and oftentimes you'll see them with just straight lines across them. Um, a popular designer for these types of quilts is Laura Heine. So she designs, um, you've probably seen one of hers. Um, she's got a mermaid in a bottle. She's got, um, oh my gosh, a spool, like all sorts of different um, collage style quilts. So um, I, you know, if you follow me, you know, I like to do custom quilting. I like to do different things, mix it up. So I, um, always quilt my mom's quilts for her and I always do custom quilting on them. So I don't just put lines or anything on them, which the lines are great. I mean, if you don't want to do custom quilting or, you know, whatever, um, the lines are great cause they do kind of just blend into the background, but I have a lot of fun creating, um, different textures in the backgrounds of these. Um, and so I've come up with a few tricks to help me be successful quilting these because I know, um, between all the different things that are in a quilt like this, it can be a challenge to quilt these, um, and not, you know, and not have thread breaks, not have your needle getting gummed up and things like that. So I'm just going to share with you a couple tricks that I use, um, because I often use metallic threads on these kinds of projects too, and other specialty type threads. So um, what I'll do is talk through some of those and then I'll do a little quilting on this too so you can see. Um, but definitely the first thing that I always do um, is start with a fresh needle. And that's just good advice across the board for any type of quilting, but especially for these because we are going to be going through so many layers and um, you may need to do a couple needle changes throughout your project if you start having problems because um, between the glue and the fabric, it's going to dull your needle pretty quickly. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that no matter what you do, because there's so much fusible in this type of project, um, your needle's going to get gummed up. It's just going to happen. So um, the fusible in here is going to, as your needle strikes, right, it's going to build up on your needle. So you'll just have to stop every so often and clean off your needle. Um, it's no big deal. It's just as long as you remember to, you know, stop every little bit and clean it off, you can keep going. Um, I use a couple different needles. Like the needle I have in my machine right now is a um, 9014 stretch needle. Um, I use that one. I've used, um, let's see, what else have I used? I've used a quilting needle. I've used some chrome needles or some like non-stick needles. Um, I think those were universal needles. And so um, I didn't find that I was as successful with those, but you could try it. I know um, the non-stick obviously is appealing because in theory um, it takes the, the um, glue and the fusible better. Um, but as long as you're stopping to clean your needle off, I think you can get away with um, whatever needle is working for you really is kind of the gist. Um, but like I said, I'm using a 9014 stretch needle. Um, the other thing I recommend, and now obviously I'm quilting this on my Bernina Q24. So this is a long arm. Um, so a sew head on a frame. And I have a couple different feet here um, that I use most often. Let me grab the other one. So um, I'm doing a combination of free motion and ruler work. So I'm going to put my ruler work foot on my machine um, and that way I don't have to keep switching feet. So I have two different types of ruler feet here. Um, let's see if I can do this and show you both without my hand covering it. So I have two different types here and these are both ruler feet for the Bernina machine. So this is the ruler foot. Um, it's the number 96 for the Bernina long arm. So the Q20 in the table and the Q24 on the frame. 
or Q20 on a frame, however you have it set up. Um, and then this is the number 72 foot, which is the ruler foot designed for the domestic Berninas. Um, and it's an adjustable foot. So most often, um, I use either one of these and I kind of, I do sometimes use them interchangeably. Um, but for this type of project, it is pretty flat. So, um, you could get away with using your 96 foot. Um, and that being said, one thing that I have found that helps in quilting these types of quilts is to use a foot like this. Um, so, you know, we have other free motion feet we can use on our, just turn this off. We have other free motion feet we can use on our long arms. Um, so, you know, like any of the other Bernina domestic um, free motion feet. So like this is foot 44, right? It's got that clear disc sole. And then I also have foot 74, which is the clear soled um, cup foot. So the thing with using feet like this, um, first this one, I have found, especially for this type of quilt, so I'm mostly talking about just for collage quilts, this type of foot doesn't have enough pressure. So when we're quilting these, right, we're our needles going through all these layers of fabric and glue. So what happens sometimes is that if there's glue, if there's the glue buildup on the needle, when the needle comes up out of the fabric, it kind of pulls on the fabric a little, right? So it can kind of pull up on the area we're stitching. So I found a foot like this, my 96 foot, right? Not a big opening here. Um, works really well because what happens is it keeps the fabric right around the needle really flat. And so even if my needle's got glue on it and it's pulling up a little, the foot is acting as kind of a brace and it's keeping the fabric down, okay? Um, this, if you use a foot like this, that's just, you know, a spring free motion foot. Sometimes we have some, I have some trouble with it. So, um, and then these adjustable feet from Bernina are, they're great. Um, I know that there have been, um, you know, people go back and forth on whether you should use them on the long arm or not. Um, I have had decent success with the adjustable feet. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on using the adjustable feet on the Q series machines, um, because there are some, um, tips and tricks you can use to make sure that you can be successful with them. Um, and things that will happen with these feet that will cause you problems if you're, if you're not using them, um, a certain way. So that's a separate video. Um, but for the most part, um, I'm using this 96 foot or my 72 foot just Honestly, sometimes it just depends on what's on my machine when I go to quilt. So um, I'm gonna start with this 96 foot. So let's put that back on the machine here. Um, right now I'm using, um, because I'm going to start quilting the background of this and I'll um, get you closer so you can see. I'll put the camera up so you can see me quilting too. But the background of this quilt, um, she actually adapted it. Let's see if I can get you closer. She actually adapted her summer harvest pattern to be a jar, like a Christmas jar. So it's um, like a jar of poinsettias. So the background of this quilt is white. So I'm gonna start with the background. Um, and that kind of, for me, um, it just kind of helps me kind of get set up. I do the background and then um, once I've quilted, obviously this area, then I'll switch probably to my red for my poinsettia leaves. Um, and do any other kind of detail work. So right now I'm using a, um, I'm using Magnifico, which is a 40 weight poly. Now on my machine, um, I have to set my tension, my top tension for Magnifico at 2.75. So I've set my machine with my tension 2.75. Um, but for my poinsettias, so I've decided my Magnifico is kind of like a glossy kind of shiny, right? It's a coated thread. So it's a little more sparkle, which will be fun in the background. And then for my poinsettias, I'm going to use this um, kind of crimsony red, so fine, um, to stitch the petals. So when I get to this, I'll show you, I'm gonna have to change my tension because I know my machine likes to run this thread at a different tension setting, that's fine. Um, and because I have this machine with digital tension, it's super easy to do. So. Um, that's what I'm going to, so I'm going to start with the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop for a second, get the camera set up on the long arm, and that way you can kind of see um, what I'm doing here. 
I like I said, I like to use different fillers in the backgrounds of these types of quilts. Um, and you can kind of see if you look at the if you look at this particular pattern cover, right? I've done some lines, I've done um, some pebbles, different textures. Sometimes I just follow the print that's in the fabric. So it just really depends. But um, let me get this switched around here and then we'll start quilting. Okay. Okay, you guys, so I have this turned around now. So you can see um, I've already basted my edge. And for these ones, right, the edge isn't always exactly straight. Um, depending on how they're put together. And that's fine. Um, on this particular one, my mom likes to trim the quilts down when I'm done, so I don't worry about that. So I'm just gonna worry about my job, which is the quilting. So um, like I said, I'm gonna start in the background, but sometimes we have these kinds of elements, right, that are kind of sticking down into, back, into the background, and that's totally fine. I'm not really worried about that. Um, sometimes I'll quilt around them with my white. It just really depends. So we're gonna get started here. I'm just gonna start right here. Um, so I'm going to bring up my thread. Um, and when I start here, I'm going to use, so I did a couple securing stitches there, and that's just my secure function on my handles. Um, and I'll do a video on that, a separate video too. But um, So I'm just going to get that secured. And then for now, I'm just going to do some free motion. I don't have my ruler tray on right now, and that's okay. So I'm just going to stitch, and I'm just going to start right here. I'm just going to do some stitching kind of around this little leaf um, and obviously it's up to you you know how much detail you want to do but I've just kind of done some stitching around that leaf and now I'm going to just move on let's see if I can turn this a little just to get it a little bit wider um, to do some stuff in here so like maybe in this one I just want to do you know some lines back and forth I'm just kind of looking at the print here so I've got these little squares I don't know if you can see it and so I'm just going to do some lines and sometimes I'll go back and do, you know, stitch around some of these elements. Again, it's totally up to you, kind of what you're feeling as you're doing it, but I'm gonna make my way back over and just stitch this one. Oftentimes what I like to do is when I get, so I've stitched that background piece and now I'm over here, is I'll stitch something else. You know, I'll change it up a little, maybe different direction or something like that. So I'm gonna, just gonna stitch around these elements. And so here I came to a corner. Let's see if I can zoom that in. Okay, so you can, now you can kind of see, right? So I've got two different fabrics here. Well, I've got four, but right here I've got the edge of my fabric. And I, when I like quilt these, I like to quilt them so they're, um, you know, just a little bit different. So let's zoom back out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of travel over on that line and up and then stitch around this element. And sometimes like this one, because the white stands out, I'll do some detail stitching um, in these pieces, okay? So let's go around that one, move up. And then we're just gonna go around. So now I have to decide what I'm gonna do in this piece. And I think I'm just gonna do some little swirls. Now, you can't really see it very well because my thread matches my background, but that's okay. Some spots you'll see it more, some spots you won't. This is a good place to practice designs, right? Because nobody will see it. So if you're not sure, swirls aren't your favorite thing, and you're like, you just need to try something new, it's a good place to hide stuff. So I'm just gonna stick around. And I'm kind of keeping an ear out on my needle, right? Because I can start to hear at some point when I get too much glue on there. So I'm just gonna use my needle up button, put my needle up and I can take a look now at my needle. And let's see, you can see a little bit of glue right here. So I'm, I probably wouldn't normally stop for that, but we can just clean some of that off. And then the trick is to not move your machine, right? So then put your needle back down and then I can just keep quilting. So I'm just gonna keep quilting here. Swirls. So you can see, right, I've got my hand in here and that's just to kind of um, give some extra stabilization to the fabric here. Um, and mostly that's probably just in my head. Um, 
I don't know. I like to have my hands in here for some reason. So um, we're going to go to the next section here. So it's a little bit different background fabric. And again, I'm just going to quilt kind of around the elements in that background section. And we're going to go over here. Okay. And now I've kind of worked, I've stitched the elements around in this little area. And then I have to decide what I'm going to stitch in here. Um, and sometimes there's not a lot of space, right? So it doesn't, it's not really going to be super crazy what you're going to do. Um, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, super extravagant. This one I could, if I wanted to, I could do this little, there's this little like kind of fleur de lis shape, but I'm going to keep it simple. And since I've got some berries here, maybe I'll just do some pebbles here. So you can see there too, like when I just started that, you kind of saw my needle catch and jump a little because I do have the, you know, there's so much glue in here. And if I start to move my machine before it's actually going, it's gonna catch a little bit like that. The one thing I do have to say about these types of quilts though, is that they are really forgiving. So if you have um, some little, you know, little kind of hiccups or whatever, um, it's really forgiving. So don't stress about it. Um, it'll, you know, it'll kind of blend in. Okay, so quilting is serious business. So I had to put my hair up because I can't have it all in my face when I'm all up in my machine. So, um, okay, so we've done a little bit of quilting on the background here. Um, we've kind of stopped to check our needle. Um, and so we're just gonna keep going. And so I'll keep going. I'll do some pebbles in that corner section I'm working on. Um, but that's kind of my thought process on how I move through these quilts. So I'm not necessarily gonna quilt all of my um, elements that are sitting on my background with my background color thread, but I might do some little details here and there. I might stitch around them. Um, I like to use lots of different things, right? And this one definitely because I have this silver um, and I kind of have this silver metallic going on. I even have some green, a little bit of green metallic. Um, I'm going to grab my green and silver metallic threads and I'm going to put them in here because it's going to look really neat and it's going to help kind of, it'll highlight some different places in here. Um, I'm not going to go crazy with it because there is already a decent amount of metallic in here, but those metallic threads can add just a nice little touch of sparkle in certain areas. So um, let's turn this around and I'll keep quilting and you can kind of see how I move through these different areas. One thing you'll notice here too, especially with doing these little details, um, and if you've seen any of my other videos, I am going quite a bit slower quilting on this. Um, and that's just because we have so many more things going on here. Um, and if you know me, you know I like to quilt really fast. And so sometimes that can be a challenge for me, but I know that if I go a little slower on these collage quilts, I'm going to get much better results. Um, and that's really great. We want it, we still want it to turn out nice. <laughs> so, um, I just have to go a little bit slower and that's okay. I just have accepted that. Um, especially because the results on these really are worth it. Um, these turn out so cool. And especially, um, you know, if you have some fun and do some custom quilting on them. Sometimes I use the outside edge to travel down to the next area. So now I've quilted, let's go back to how that I did that. 
So I've quilted this area now and you can kind of see, let's zoom in a little. I've got these nice pebbles over here. Oops. I've got these nice pebbles over here. I've done some little bit of detail stitching in some of these little Christmas bubbles. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna keep going and I'll stop talking. Okay, so right here, I'm just about to run out of space. I probably have another inch, inch and a half, but I just usually pick an element, a spot, that's my kind of stopping point. And then on my advance, right, I can just keep going. So I'm just gonna stitch this one little spot here and then I'll move over to the other side. Um, this is, I'm at a good spot here to go ahead and stop. And you can see, right, my needles kind of got a little bit of uh, gunk on it. So I'm just going to just use my fingers to clean that off, get rid of it, and now I can keep going. You can see here, I'm just going, I'm just using the elements and fabric. And if I get to my Right, I've got a piece of um, a little detail that's secluded here. I don't want to stitch over it, so I just stitch around it, and that's okay. I can just travel around it. Like that to do the rest of the element there. Okay. Okay, so I've quilted my background down to here. I've got some over here I can do, um, but I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and break thread and jump over to the other side. Um, and then I might come in later and do some detail back here. Or what happens sometimes with these, right, is you don't have to quilt every element. Um, so like I've got background, oh, you can't see that, let's turn that here. So see, I've got some background here behind these little berry elements. Um, but you know, not everything in these has to be quilted. Not everything has to be stitched down. Um, for the most part, these are probably, you're not washing these, right? You're putting them, um, hanging them on a wall or something like that. So um, 
you know, even though I do like to stitch everything within an inch of its life, you don't have to necessarily do that on these kinds of projects. So we secured, brought up our thread and we're gonna cut and then we can jump over. Um, and you can see, so here's the poinsettias. Let's see if I can zoom out, there we go. So here's our poinsettias and here's our jar. So they're coming out of our jar. Um, and I could, if I wanted to, it's, it might be a little hard to see, but um, this silver is metallic in these poinsettias. So um, I could come in with my white and do some detail, but I'm probably not going to. I'm probably just going to use my red and do some stitching in here. Um, so actually, you know what? I'm going to stop for a second and I'll put my red thread in and I'll show you um, kind of what I'm gonna do in here. Okay, so one thing I wanna point out here, um, this is my screen here. And I was telling you, I have to run my Magnifico at 2.75. I've got my red so fine loaded up now. So I'm gonna go into my programs here and I have so fine set up as a program. So I'm going to select that and now you can see change my tension setting. Okay, so now I've got the right tension setting for my red so fine, which I'm going to stitch in this poinsettia element. So now we're set up. So where I'm just gonna start right here, kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna use my button to bring up my bobbin thread. Okay, and one thing I wanna point out too, I have white bobbin thread um, in here because that's what I chose. So um, I'm not gonna to worry too much about the white. Um, I have found that it's, it, it's not gonna come through too much. Again, we have a lot of layers. We'll see when we start quilting, like let's see if we notice any white. I don't see any white here. Let's see if I can zoom you in to see. Uh, it's hard to tell because it does the thread blends so well. Um, oops, let's get this thread untangled here. Pick up our foot. Get these threads out of the way. Okay. So, and this is a really thin thread. So this um, so fine is a 50 weight thread. I'm sorry. It's a, yeah. I was right, it's 50 weight. So it's a 50 weight thread, so it's gonna be pretty thin. Um, so really what I wanna use this thread for, because I really like this metallic, I don't wanna take away from the fabric. Um, but I wanna use this thread to give my poinsettia leaves some definition. Let's get my thread out. Um, again, without taking away from this cool metallic. So I'm just going to outline stitch these. Oh, and look, I've got a little cardinal here, so I'll stitch around him a little bit. Him I can put a little more detail in. Um, so we'll just stitch the detail on his wings. There we go. So these two pieces kind of run into each other, which is fine. I'm just gonna jump over and kind of pretend they're one piece. And there, I'm back to where I started. So I can go up to here and just keep going. So like I said, I'm just gonna use my red to do some outlining. Um, and right now, it may not look like too much. This is the one we just did over here. Um, but when we're done, and depending on what kind of batting. Okay, so we've done some background stitching. We've done some detail stitching on our poinsettia. Um, and so what I was starting to say was, depending on the batting you put in your collage quilt. So I've done these with, um, I think I have this batting and this particular one is the um, Dream Bamboo or Dream Orient if you have an earlier version of the packaging. So it's a fairly thin batting, um, it's a low loft, but it does give nice definition to the quilting, which is cool. Um, I've quilted some of these with wool batting, which is really neat because you do get a lot more definition. Um, but typically on these types, especially um, this pattern, so whether you're doing the poinsettia or you're doing the summer harvest, which is just the flowers in the jar, I really like to keep those leaves pretty open or those petals, the flowers, the main focus, and just um, do a little bit of outline stitching just to kind of give them some dimension, but not smash everything down, right? If I quilt everything really dense, it's all gonna be smashed down and I won't get that 3D effect um, of one of the collage style quilting or collage style project, but then my quilting, right? It's just kind of, 
smashes everything down, everything looks like it's the same. So um, if I leave those a little bit open, then they stand out a little bit more. So that's kind of my plan for the middle here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll quilt a few more and then we're gonna load up metallic and I'm gonna show you how I use the metallic and how I um, do the settings on the machine as well as um, possibly, uh, sometimes with metallic, I need to use the, um, the thread lubricant um, in the machine. So I'll show you on this machine how you use that too. every single petal and that's okay um mostly i just you know i just want to get some of the detail um and this one let's see i stopped here so i don't really want to do i could do some red on this um, if you want to make some of these other little elements stand out you can um so i'm just going to keep it kind of in the red pieces on this little bobble stitch that gray leaf and then you can work your way over to your next element right so here's the cardinal I can stitch up and around him and now I've made it over to my next leaf piece and again you don't necessarily have to stitch every element I'm just kind of outlining I could do too while I was here if I wanted was I could come over here and stitch these berries um but because these berries are so small and I don't really want to do that many thread breaks um and I don't really want red stitching all the way through I probably won't stitch every single berry what I'll do is I'll come back maybe with a green and stitch the vine and that will give it some definition without me having to stitch every single berry right unless you really like to do all that little detail work then of course, you definitely could do that. Um, but for me, right, sometimes my thought process is just kind of getting things done quickly because um, I maybe tend to be a little bit of a procrastinator. So whenever my mom gives these to me, she usually has to remind me like, hey, you have that quilt of mine, right? And I need it by this day. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, okay. I have a week, I should probably do it, so. Sometimes I'm just trying to get things done quickly. I still want it to look nice, right? And I still want there to be detail over here. Um, but I might not have time to go stitch every single one of these berries. That's okay. So we're just going to use our outlining to travel to our next area. Um, and you can see, right, if you have any elements like this, I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see the crease. So this guy, this one, this guy's not all the way stuck down. Um which is fine, not a big deal. But if there's elements like that in the in your quilt, I usually try and make sure I stitch those down. Um, you could also hit it with, you know, an iron again when you were done. It, it just the glue, maybe this didn't quite stick. It didn't quite you know, get stuck all the way down.
Okay, so one thing I wanna talk about at this point before I start with the metallic is that no matter how much you do here, right? So I've got, you know, I've got my stretch needle, um, I've got my tension set right, I'm going slow, I've got this um, foot on to help keep the fabric down. There will probably be a point on your collage quilt um, where your thread breaks, or maybe you didn't stop soon enough to clean the gum off your needle and it causes an issue. Um, and that's okay. So like I said, these quilts are really fun because you can actually, you know, hide some of that stuff a lot easier. Um, in general, I feel like these quilts lend themselves to do a little bit more um, thread painting or, you know, um, you can put more thread on them and they still look really great. So if your thread breaks, don't, you know, don't panic. Um, it happens, right? It happens even on regular quilts. So um, usually what I'll do if my thread breaks, I'll pull out, you know, the, the break or the skip or whatever happened um, and get it back to where it's a clean stitch. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and um, just back up a few stitches, you know, wherever I'm at. I'll bring up my thread there, secure it, and then stitch over, um, you know, those couple stitches and then keep going. Um, usually on the first, you know, on the first thread break, I... Um, I don't really change much. I kind of just think, oh, you know, I'll check my needle if it got gummed up, um, you know, just kind of chalk it up to, you know, life, the universe and Murphy's law. Um, and then I'll just, so I'll just keep going. Now, if it keeps happening, if I keep having issues, then at that point, I'm going to stop and try and troubleshoot whatever the issue is. So if, um, you know, if I'm having my thread break, um, maybe it's time for a new needle, right? Maybe I've got, st maybe I got, stuff gummed up in the eye of the needle and it's just catching the thread every time. So um, I'm gonna try a new needle. If my thread is shredding, um, a couple things there. Usually, so I pretty much always start troubleshooting with my needle. So um, if I start having issues, just especially with a collage quilt because we're going through so much, um, I will just start with a new needle. Sometimes I'll change the type of needle if I have a lot of, if I'm having specific issues, if I'm having a certain kind of issue. Um, if my thread is shredding, then I will change to a different size of needle, right? So maybe I need to go up a needle size. And sometimes, especially with these collage quilts, sometimes you are going to have to run a bigger needle because it's going through so much. You need a little bit more space, right? We've got the fusible gumming up our needle. So sometimes we do have to go up a size and that's okay. So there's no like one size fits all, at least in my experience. Um, there's no one size fits all needle for all our projects. So you kind of have to play with it a little. And I have a giant stack of needles over there because of that particular, um, because of the way I troubleshoot and I do tend to start with a needle. So if you're having some issues like that, start with your needle. Um, again, make sure you're stopping to clean it off. So right now I'm going to um, secure my red thread, pull it up, get my metallic, and then we're gonna go over um, running metallic threads and using that um, thread conditioner. Okay, you guys, so I have these metallic threads here. So I pulled out a black because I could do some black. Black would be really cool because, let's just stand back here. Okay, so black would be really cool because, look, I've got a few places here. I've got these like dark kind of charcoaly black pet like um, oops, petals. That would be fun. I've got some black on the little chickadee, um, some over here. Even maybe I could put some over here. And then I have my kind of silvery color. Is this, oops, let's see. So it's kind of a silvery color. I could put some here, but actually what I thought would be kind of cool and kind of excites me because I love thread. I have this green, look how pretty that is, but it matches these kind of, um, you know, pine needle pieces over here. So I might do some metallic green over here and some black, and I might not use the silver. So I like to use metallic, but I like to use it sparingly. So I think I'm gonna hold off on the silver and I'm just gonna use the black and the green because I think it'll add a nice element, but it won't overwhelm what, what else is going on here, right? I could even put, if I wanted to, if it's not too dark, 
right? I could actually use, it's a little bit more blue than green, but I could, I have a green metallic. I could put some green metallic down here if I wanted to, but I think I'm just gonna use it sparingly. So we're gonna get it set up here. So what I'm gonna do is, um, let's just turn that down. We're gonna go over this here. So on my long arm, let me back up. So, okay, we're using, this is a superior metallic. Um, it is. So here's what they're recommending for needles, but um, I have black and then this kind of evergreen color. So let's see, can you see, you can kind of see the thread here, right? So if you've ever tried to use metallic thread, you know it can be kind of finicky. Um, so the way that it's getting set up on the long arm, um, so we're gonna put it up on our spool pin here. Now, I was talking to you about those, um, about the thread conditioner. So, look, my thread just went right in the right spot here. So I've got my um, thread guides here, and then in the middle here is where I'm gonna put that thread conditioner. So, let's grab the thread conditioner. I've got it over here on the wall. So this bottle right here, if you have a Q-Series machine, you've seen this bottle. This bottle is not machine oil. So do not put this in your machine, but um, this is your thread conditioner, okay? So the way you're gonna use it, and of course I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm not gonna do it right here on camera, but you're gonna open it. You're gonna put a couple drops in this pad here, okay? Only a couple, you don't really need a lot. Um, and then when you thread your machine, you're gonna come underneath this guy, right? And then up and over, and your thread, when you put it in here, let's see if I can do this. I'm jostling you guys around too much. So, right, it's gonna be underneath here, and your thread is going to sit into this thread guide here. There's a little, you can kind of see it. There's a little slot. So see there, and it'll gonna it'll go down in between. And I'll I'll uh, show you once I've got it threaded here. So you're gonna thread it under, over, and then through here, and then your threading path is going to be the same. Now I run the Superior Metallic threads at a top tension setting of two. So I'm just going to turn my tension. Oops, turn my tension down. Let's close out of that. And now my tension is set at two, okay? So that's where I'm gonna start. Um, I'm gonna get this threaded up and we'll see. And then we're gonna check it to make sure everything looks good. Okay, so I've got my metallic thread in my needle here. I've got my tension setting set. So we're going to stitch one of these black leaves over here. And I'm gonna bring up my thread and I'm gonna secure it just like any other thread, okay? So let's start stitching here. And the metallic thread, let's just stop and I'm gonna get rid of, this is my tail, you guys, not, <laughs> I know it kind of looked like it, and you're like, it didn't stitch, but it did. Um, so let's just cut those tails. And you can see my stitching line right here. So the metallic thread is very thin. Um, and so maybe on these, because I'm using metallic, I wanna do something a little bit more fun in these leaves. So maybe I'll just do this kind of like, shape here, okay? And so when I'm doing these, obviously, um, I'm not gonna travel with this thread because I don't want black metallic thread all over my other stuff. So I'm just going to secure it and then pull up my bottom thread and cut, and then I'm gonna jump over here, okay? And then maybe we'll just start down here. Oops, didn't grab my tail fast enough. Okay. And again, I haven't switched out that white bobbin thread. I'm still using that white bobbin thread. So maybe on this one, I'll just stitch, which I kind of now wish I would have done on the other one. That's okay. I'm just gonna stitch those leaf kind of spines, right? That looks cool. That looks cooler than the other one, I think. That's okay. We'll do another one like that and then it'll look like I did it on purpose. So do I have another? We'll do this guy over here. I'm cutting my, keep cutting my bobbin thread too short. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna secure. And I'm just going to, do this. so oftentimes when I use metallic, I will stitch the line twice because it's thin. Um, and the whole point of the metallic, right, is I really wanna see the thread. So I'm gonna come down here and do this little guy. 
Okay, so I've done a couple of those. Let's zoom out so you can kind of see. So I've done that one over here. So the one thing, um, so maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do this little guy here. I'll do this little guy over here. Um, oops. Oh, we really need to be pay more attention when I cook this. There we go. Okay, so what I was gonna say is one thing I really don't like to do on collage clothes is pull stitches because usually because we've got fusible if I have to pull stitches it's gonna leave a hole and I don't like to have holes in my quilts so if I can avoid pulling stitches I will so either um, quilt something else around it or whatnot um, but I try not to pull stitches so there you go so this the black actually looks really cool on this gray it stands out a bit more so that's kind of neat so I could use that in a couple other places um further down on the bottom of the quilt I have some more area but I think for right now I'm gonna put a little bit of black on the chickadee again my sometimes my trouble with these quilts is that I um you know I just I don't know when to stop but I just want to keep going and so um, I have to be careful that I don't just like you know go too crazy and then my mom's like what did you do So the idea here is I'm just, oh, that looks cool. I'm just giving some more detail um, to that little chickadee just to kind of make him stand out. So I'm trying not to go overboard. So let's get rid of that, get rid of that. And then I could do these little guys down here. Oops. So sometimes I cut my thread too short. So let's go over here. Yep, there it is. So if that happens, I just come over here and I just pull a little bit longer of a tail and come back over. Okay. So. Again, with the metallic especially, um, you know, go a little slower if you are having issues with it. But but this tension setting of two seems to be working for me. It might be a little different on your machine, um, even though, you know, if we're both running, if you're running the same a Q series, um, Q24 or a Q20, either on a frame or on a table, just because they're the same machine doesn't necessarily mean they like the same setting. So play with yours and see. Oh, I'm gonna just go around him like that. His head. Oh, they're so cute. There we go. So see, so that's kind of cool. Let me zoom out a little. So that's really cool because you can kind of see now it wasn't a lot, but now my little um chickadee birds stand out a little bit more just with that, you know, little bit of black thread. Okay. So let's just look here. I don't know that there's anywhere else I really wanna put the black metallic. So I think I'm gonna call that good. Um, and even though that guy's a little different, that's okay. It's okay to be different. So we'll, we'll leave him over there, he's fine. Um, I could do some over here, but I think I'd really prefer to have the white stitching in these just cause I, um, I kind of prefer how that looks. So that's fine. So we're going to swap the black metallic for the green metallic. Okay, so I've got my green metallic thread in here now. So I'm gonna quilt these um, little pine branch elements over here. I'm just gonna start in here. So what I'm gonna do for this one is, um, I call it scribble quilting. I'm sure there's maybe a more technical name for it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do kind of random lines. I'm just gonna scribble on it, right? It's kind of like coloring. Um, and I'm just going to make these kind of spiky back and forth lines just to give these little guys some definition, um, but not overwhelm them, right? So now I, um, can just come over here out in the, um, 
extra and just stitch in some of these. And then I'm gonna use that to get myself down here. Okay, so remember I said at some point we're gonna have a thread break, so that's okay. So I just, um, my thread didn't actually break. Looks like what happened, let's zoom in. Okay, so you can see here. So I have a bunch of gunk on my needle and you can see what happened was my thread shredded, okay? So you can see it here, it popped out of the guide here, but really what happened was, see right here? on it it's a little bit close but my thread shredded up my needle so that's okay it happens it's not a big deal so I'm just gonna figure out where I was since it's no longer attached that's okay and I'm going to just get it rethreaded so first I need to pull it over because I'm probably my bobbin thread yep okay so my metallic thread just broke and that's okay it happens so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um just kind of you know, disconnect everything, disengage. Um, and I'm going to just look underneath and we're gonna see what happens um, and just clear out anything that got sucked down, right? And then I'll check the threading on my machine, um, get it re-threaded and then we'll see if we can keep going. I did have some gunk on my needle, so that could have contributed to um, that thread breaking. I'm also running the metallic. Oh, and I just realized I didn't actually thread the, um, I didn't thread it through my um, thread guide up there with my thread conditioner. So there we go, user error. Um, so we're gonna see, I'm gonna thread re-thread it correctly, um, clean up the, um, the mess here, and then we'll keep going. Okay, I've got things re-threaded. I'm pulling my thread back up. Just, oops just a couple stitches back. So the end of my metallic thread is right here. So let's clean that up. I'm gonna pull it a couple stitches back and we're gonna try starting again right there. Okay, let's get rid of some of that extra. I also re-threaded it through the conditioner guide. decide that you um, don't really care about the metallic. Um, it's hard to see right now as far as um, kind of the sparkliness. Um, it really is more evident once you have um, the quilt kind of off the frame um, and off, you know, um, let's see, you can see it without the lights on here, the extra lights on my machine. So anyway, um, oops. so properly threading through the guide with the conditioner seems to have helped. Um, and you can kind of, I finished, oh, see, it looks really cool right over here. I put a little bit more thread over here and I think that helps, um, you know, if you're like, I can't really see it. Sometimes you just need more thread. It's never, well, I guess sometimes it could be bad, but in my mind, I like more thread, so. I'm gonna jump over here. short to get you closer here there we go so sometimes if I'm lazy I have a little gap here but I'm just gonna carefully run my stitch over that 
didn't want to break my thread to travel a quarter of an inch. So when I'm stitching these back and forth lines, I'm trying to kind of stitch back on top of the line I already stitched, and that way it does kind of help the metallic thread stand out a little bit more. Okay, so let's give her some of that extra. So now we can kind of see we've stitched our area of metallic thread here. Um, and again, it might be a little hard to tell on camera here, um, but once you have it off, it does create some really nice dimension. Okay, so let's see if you can see from this angle, kind of. You can kind of see the metallic thread it picks up a little bit here. I think I've got too much, I've almost got too much light on with the camera. Um, so I've stitched some of my background over here. So I've got some background stitched over here. I've got some of my um, petals in here stitched. I've done some metallic over here. So now I have a little bit more work to do. I have some more background to stitch over here um, and then some more detail over here. Typically my process, um, and especially over here, right? There's a lot going on here. Um, and a lot of different colors, right? So we've got some green. I do have some background, but I have some silvery background back here. Um, and so typically what I'll do is I will just use my outlining to navigate kind of around those elements. Um, and sometimes like maybe on these little um, holly leaves, I will just go ahead and use my white like I did over here, right? And just do some detail. And then I'll go back in later um, and add some more. So I typically kind of work my way through, do the background, do some of the bigger elements, um, you know, doing some detail, doing the stitching around these guys. Um, and then I'll advance the quilt. So like I need to come back here obviously and do some more detail because I need to get that area stitched down. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see. Okay, so from the side, right? So I've stitched here. This guy isn't stitched and you can see how he sticks up, which is cool, I like that. But I do want a little bit more definition. So if I just go in and do those um, kind of you know, branch lines, then it'll look really cool because the rest of it will stay 3D, um, but I'll get a nice effect. Okay, so hopefully this has helped some of you, um, you know, kind of get excited about tackling some of these collage quilts. I have a lot of fun quilting these. I mean, there's so much you can do. And honestly, for somebody like me, who um, really likes to put a lot of thread on stuff, you can, this is kind of a project you can get away with putting a lot of thread on. Um, and people don't notice quite as much. So, um, they're a lot of fun. If you're looking for some good collage projects, um, like I said, Laura Heine is probably the most commonly known, um, but my mom has designed a handful of patterns. Um, Summer Harvest is one. Um, she's got a really cute um, Alaskan boot, so um, Alaskan extra tufts with flowers at the top. It's really cute. Um, she has a couple other ones. Um, you can find them all at Seems Like Home. Um, the shop has them. You can find them on the shop's website, um, akseams.com. Uh, and then I will also post, I have just a printable, like one sheet um, kind of tips and tricks for quilting collage quilts. So I will um, put a link to that so you guys can access that. Um, that one is more generic. It's not specifically related to the Q-Series machines, um, but it's just kind of a general <clears throat> troubleshooting and, you know, um, tricks for quilting collage quilts. So hopefully you guys had fun with this. Um, I'll try and do, like I said, I've got a couple more videos lined up. Um, if you, if this is helpful and the, the other videos um, on troubleshooting and things like that have been helpful, will you um, share, like, subscribe, whatever, all the things, you know, um, because uh, I did have, uh, had somebody reach out to me the other day from somewhere out of state and it's fun when I can help you guys, um, especially with, um, these Bernina Q series machines. Um, you know, I am super passionate about quilting 
and I love my um, Q24s um, and hopefully soon my, a Q20. Um, but I love these machines and I have so much fun with them um, and there's so many possibilities. Um, but you know, troubleshooting is just a part of quilting life. Um, it happens like you can see with my metallic thread, which ended up being user error. Um, but there are so many ways to um, be able to do the things you want with these machines. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out um, how to do them. So if you have questions about how to do something with your machine, uh, specifically a Q series, Q20, Q24 um, frame or table version, um, let me know, send me an email, um, leave me a comment, reach out to me because I am very happy to help. Um, and I have been through a lot of those issues, um, learned a lot in the first year I had this machine. Um, and so, uh, I'm happy to help. So if you can or want to reach out, um, and definitely, um, use your dealer, you know, the place you bought it. If you didn't get it from a dealer or they went out of business or whatever, you know, feel free to reach out to me, but even your other local dealers that have these machines, um, I know, um, they're probably more than happy to help. So, um, so definitely just reach out. Don't, don't stay frustrated, um, because that's no fun. And then you're not quilting. So reach out if you have questions, otherwise get back to quilting and I'll see you guys next time.